Jesus, what a friend for sinners, Jesus, lover of my soul. Friends, Welcome to the Unknown Bible, the broadcast ministry of Bible Believers Baptist Church in Corpus Christi, Texas. Join us now for today's Bible study with our pastor, Bevins Welder. Today we want to preach about pitfalls of Bible believers. Now for the most part, I suppose that if you have listened to a few of our broadcasts, you understand that we are Bible believers. We believe that God has preserved his words in the English language, in the King James Bible, and we preach with that conviction and we believe that. And you may be of like mind. You, you may be a Bible believer just like we are. And you, you may be strongly convicted as we are that these are the words of God and we have them preserved for us in English. Well, listen, when, when, when you and I become Bible believers, when we, when we're not only saved, but we realize that God has preserved his words and we believe them and live by them and they are the authority in our lives, you know what happens? Uh, what happens to us is we, we become exclusive. Because we recognize that if other people don't believe what we believe about these words, uh, they use modern Bibles, or they go to different kind of churches or something, that somehow or another they are second class. And that, that happens. And, and what will then happen is that we, we come into some pitfalls of things that we believe that go along with believing that the King James Bible is the word of God and that God has preserved these words for us. And those pitfalls become a problem in our association with other people. And those pitfalls become a problem in our association even sometimes with each other. So today we want to talk about those pitfalls and we want to, we want to see them so that we can avoid them. Turn to 1 Kings chapter 19, verse 10, and I'll give you the first pitfall. This is Elijah. And what's happened in, verse eight, in chapter 18 is that Elijah has challenged the prophets of Baal, uh, and he's challenged those that were there at Carmel to understand that God the Lord is God and that Baal is not God. Now, when God proved that he is the Lord by consuming Elijah's sacrifice, Elijah then slew the prophets of Baal. After that, Jezebel said, I'm going to get you. And so he ran and he got depressed. The Lord showed up in 1 Kings chapter 19, verse 9. And he asked Elijah, what doest thou here, Elijah? And in verse 10, Elijah said, I have been very jealous for the Lord God of hosts, for the children of Israel have forsaken thy covenant, thrown down thine altars, and slain thy prophets with the sword. Watch it. And I, even I only am left, and they seek my life to take it away. I, even I, only am left, and they seek my life to take it away. You know what the pitfall was? Elijah believed that he alone was God's remnant of believers in that day. And you know what the pitfall is that we have to avoid? Believing that we are God's remnant of believers in these last days. You see, Elijah said, I, even I only am left, and they seek my life to take it away. But in verse 18 of 1 Kings chapter 19, the Lord said to Elijah, Yet I have left me 7,000 in Israel, all the knees which have not bowed unto Baal, and every mouth which hath not kissed him. Elijah didn't know that. Elijah got the impression that he was the only one. 
And the fact is, there were 7,000 people who had not bowed the knee to Baal. As Bible believers, we sometimes get the idea there's no one else walking as closely to the Lord as we're walking. Or we get the idea there's no one else serving the Lord as faithfully as we're serving Him. Uh, we, we get a little bit like Elijah and we think, you know what? There's nobody else here doing what we're doing just the way we're doing it. Watch out. We have to be careful here. And the reason is you, you don't know and I don't know what it is ab about other believers uh, that the Lord loves and, and what it is about the other believers that that they love about the Lord God and the relationship that they have with each other. They don't, they don't know. You don't know. So what we need to do is we need to just do this. We need to, to remember to be faithful, to continue to serve the Lord with all of our heart, to love God with all of our heart and our mind and our soul, to continue to believe these words and to stand by these words but not to then be judgmental and think we're it and nobody else. That we've got to watch out for. That's the pitfall. It set Elijah up for a period of discouragement and depression. We need to be careful about that ourselves. Here's the second pitfall that we need to avoid. We need to avoid the pitfall of thinking that God isn't using anybody else besides us to preach Christ. Turn to Philippians chapter 1. Philippians chapter 1. And in Philippians chapter 1, look at verses 14 through 18. Paul is in prison, and here's what he writes. Philippians 1, 14. Many of the brethren in the Lord, waxing confident by my bonds, are much more bold to speak the word without fear. Some indeed preach Christ even of envy and strife, and some also of good will. The one preached Christ of contention, not sincerely, supposing to add affliction to my bonds, but the other of love, knowing that I am set for the defense of the gospel. What then, notwithstanding, every way, whether in pretense or in truth, Christ is preached? And I therein do rejoice, yea, and will rejoice. Christ is is preached, and I therein do rejoice, yea, and will rejoice. What's he saying? I don't, he said, I don't care that there are people that are preaching and making fun of me, that there are preaching people preaching Christ of contention, and they're not sincere, that they're supposing to add affliction to my bonds. He said, I don't care about that. He was rejoicing because Christ is preached. We need to have that same attitude. God, listen, God uses many different people in many different circumstances with many different doctrinal views to bring people to Jesus Christ. You may not like whom he's using. You may not agree with whom he's using. And you may believe their converts aren't getting saved because the people God's using don't believe what you believe. Watch out. Watch out. Now, you and I, Believe these words, the words of God that are preserved for us in the King James Bible. Listen, we cannot compromise on our belief. And, and we believe what Paul said about salvation. And we must preach it just the way God has shown us in the words of God. Can't compromise that. But at the same time, we can't get to the point of arrogance where we're thinking, if we're not the ones leading them to Jesus Christ, if we're not the ones preaching Jesus Christ, then they're not getting saved because we didn't do it. You, you, you understand uh, the Holy Spirit is the one that saves people. They're born again by the Spirit of God. It's Jesus Christ who died for them. And so if God wants to use somebody that's different than we are, we should rejoice that he's done that. We should rejoice that God has chosen uh, to use somebody else to lead one of our relatives or friends or family members or people that we've been praying for to the Lord. I know of people uh, who God, God used uh, a priest and they came to Jesus Christ and got saved. 
They have a fabulous and excellent testimony of their Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and a changed life of something that the Lord Jesus Christ has done in their lives and trust in God. And it wasn't a Bible believer that led them to the Lord Jesus Christ. Rejoice like Paul. Christ is preached. Rejoice in that. Listen, you and I understand we're not going to let our churches go the way of the world in order to get a crowd. We're just not going to do that. We can't do that. We're Bible believers. But if God wants to use somebody in a church who's preaching Christ, who's allowed his church to go to the Lord, rejoice when people get saved. They're rejoicing in heaven when people get saved. And we should do that instead of having some attitude. Huh. They may not be saved. God didn't use us to do it. Whoa, watch out. Watch out for that pitfall. There's an arrogance in that that is going to result in a contention that's going to not be good. We must avoid the pitfall of believing that we are God's remnant of believers in these last days. Certainly, you and I know to believe that the words in this King James Bible are the words of God. We're not going to change that. But then we're also not the judge of whom God is is uh, appreciating who, like those 7,000 that didn't bow the knee to Baal, are, are, are people that you know God acknowledges as well. You've got to be careful there. And you've got to be careful of, of being sour because God didn't use you to lead somebody else to the Lord. He used somebody you don't even like. <laughs> we've got to watch out for that. We need to be like Paul and just rejoice that Christ is preached. All right, here's another, here's another pitfall. 2 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians chapter 10, 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 12. All right, here we go. 2 Corinthians chapter 10. Verse 12, Paul said, We dare not make ourselves of the number or compare ourselves with some that commend themselves, but they, measuring themselves by themselves and comparing themselves among themselves, are not wise. Paul said it's not wise to measure yourselves by yourselves, and it's not wise to compare yourself among, uh, among yourselves. What is that pitfall? We, we have to avoid the pitfall of looking down on other preachers or looking down on other churches because they're different than we are. I'm talking about among Bible believers. Now, I'm not talking about, uh, we certainly recognize the difference in denominations and we recognize the difference between an independent Baptist church, for instance, and a Southern Baptist church, those kinds of things. We, we recognize those, we recognize those differences. What I'm talking about is you've got Bible believers that can't get along with each other because uh, their preacher went to one school and the other preacher went to a different school. And our school is better than your school. The, what? The, you know what that is? That is measuring themselves by themselves and comparing themselves among themselves. Uh, you know what this is? This is this is one preacher looking down on another preacher with a condescending eye because they associate with a different crowd. Or one church looking down on another church because they associate with different groups. Or, or, or they attend different meetings than the other church does. Or they, you understand? Or they may have friends that you don't like. Or maybe, maybe you don't like the way their preacher preaches, or you don't like the way, if you're the preacher, you don't like the way that preacher preaches. Yeah, you better watch out. <laughs> Paul said, it's not a good, this is not wise to make those comparisons. It is not wise to measure like that. That's a pitfall for preachers. What are you to do? Well, what you are to do is this, and what I'm to do is this. We are to have grace with men that God chooses to use, and we are to have grace and charity with churches that God uses. Even though, even though uh, the places where we associate and the places where we were trained are different. You know what we really need to do? Just listen. You know or should know 
how God intends to use you and what he has shown you in the scripture and what he wants you to believe. Guard that with all your life, but don't use that as a sword to take out somebody else who doesn't believe it just like you do and doesn't preach it just like you do, and yet who is a Bible believer. Be careful. Watch out. Paul said, that's not wise. We need to be careful there. We need to be a little bit more like Paul there and have some grace to just, well, as a friend of mine used to say, you just run in your lane. You just run your race in your lane. Make sure you stay in your lane. Let God worry about the other guy, okay? Instead of making your pulpit or, or, or your church a platform to, to condemn somebody else that's different than you are. Yeah, that's a pitfall. You know what it results in, right? Pride. And, oh, we got to be careful with that. Uh, another pitfall that we as Bible believers must avoid is this one. Preaching that our convictions and methods are right, and therefore others are wrong. Let's go to Romans chapter 14. This is a pretty good example here of, uh, of a passage that would instruct us on this pitfall. Romans chapter 14, verse 2 through 6. Um, verse 1 says, Him that is weak in the faith receive ye, but not to doubtful disputations. For one believeth that he may eat all things, and another who is weak eateth herbs. Let not him that eateth despise him that eateth not. See the difference in their convictions? And let not him which eateth not judge him that eateth. See the difference in their convictions? For God hath received him. Who art thou that judgest another man's servant to his own master? He standeth or falleth. Yea, he shall be holden up. For God is able to make him stand. One man esteemeth one day above another. Another esteemeth every day alike. Let every man be fully persuaded in his own mind. He that regardeth the day regardeth it unto the Lord. And he that regardeth not the day to the Lord he regardeth not, uh, doth not regard it. He that eateth, eateth to the Lord, for he, for he giveth God thanks. And he that eateth not to the Lord, he eateth not, and giveth God thanks. So you see, these men here in Romans chapter 14 have different convictions about what they can eat. One says he can eat anything. The other one says, all I can eat is herbs. And Paul said, stay in your, stay in your corners. <laughs> Don't, don't condemn the guy who can only eat herbs. If you're a vegetarian, don't condemn the guy who eats meat. Those are different convictions, and each one holds those con convictions fully persuaded in his own mind to the Lord. Among Bible believers, our personal convictions and our methods of ministering vary. I don't say extremely, but they vary moderately. We don't all do things the same way, and we don't all believe things the same way, uh, as far as our convictions are concerned. Yet it's easy to think that everybody else ought to adhere to our convictions, and that if they don't, somehow they're wrong. Uh, likewise, it's easy uh, for us to think that the methods that are working in our ministry are the same methods that everybody else ought to use or they're wrong. Listen, the methods that work in one ministry may not work in another ministry. Yet, as Bible believers, we are quick to judge that if others aren't doing what we're doing, they've compromised and they're wrong. you got to watch out for that. You've really got to watch out for that. I've got a lot of friends in the ministry and... Boy, we don't do things the same way and don't necessarily hold the same personal convictions, but I love these guys. And I'm sure, I'm sure with you that, that in many cases, that is the same for you. But boy, we've also met those that we know whose convictions become the gospel, if you will. They become the, the truth of the words of God. And if anybody is not within those fences, they're wrong. Now, you know, you may choose to determine how to select those with whom you fellowship based on their convictions and their methodology. That's quite all right. Be careful with pride. Be careful with that. 
I'm not going to do that. I haven't done that. I've got friends of mine and their methods are very different. Convictions many times very different. But man, I really, really appreciate these men in the ministry. They've been such a big help. Don't listen. Don't cut yourself off from the possibility of having a really good and needful relationship with another friend in the ministry just because his convictions and methods are not just exactly like yours. Be careful with that. I've got a good friend of mine who uh, invited several preachers to come and have fellowship with him in his home. And I, I know the men that were invited and and different ways of doing things uh, very different in some cases. And I thought to myself, praise the Lord. You know, thank God for that. Why? Because Bible believers, while we are not alone, we're not Elijah, there are others. Uh, just great to be able to have some friends in the ministry support each other with prayer and support each other with encouragement and sometimes even support each other with counsel. Amen. So, so don't cut yourself off just because there's somebody that's doing a pretty good job, but it's not doing it quite like you are. You know, <laughs> you'd be amazed at how God is using some of those folks that you won't associate with because their convictions aren't like yours. Be careful. Avoid that pitfall. And then another pitfall we need to avoid is this one, getting puffed up because we think we know more Bible than others do. 1 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 1. 1 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 1, Now as touching things offered unto idols, we know that we all have knowledge. Watch it. Knowledge puffeth up, but charity edifieth. It is very easy as a Bible believer to get puffed up because we already believe that the King James Bible is the Word of God, and that's kind of a exclusive little group, you know. And then we get the idea we've really studied our Bibles and learned some doctrines, and we, and we think because we know more Bible than others do that we get puffed up. Be careful with that. Knowledge puffeth up. That's what Paul said. It will get you proud. You see, there are some people, there are some people who, who are believers. I mean, they, they love God, they're saved, but they know very little Bible compared to the doctrinal knowledge of most Bible believers. Uh, they're, they're, they're weak in their Bible knowledge. But you know something? Their charity often exceeds that of Bible believers. If you think about it, we can be a pretty coarse bunch. <laughs> I mean, we really, we're like pretty gritty sandpaper. We do well to have their charity. In 1 Corinthians chapter 13, in verse 2, Paul said this, Though I have the gift of prophecy, watch it, and understand all mysteries and all knowledge. Paul said, though I, ha though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains and have not charity, I'm nothing. I'm nothing. Yeah. <laughs> mm. We need to quit looking down on others because they don't know what we know. Honestly, if we had a little more charity, others might be more inclined to let us teach them some things they ought to know. So we have to watch out there. Years ago when I first got on the radio, I, I, the Bible was a sledgehammer and the audience were moles and I, and I preached like you would play whack-a-mole at the carnival. I just couldn't wait for somebody to stick their head up and boom, down down we go with the Bible and knock them back in the hole. Just rude, you know, and uh, and rude in the in, in the pulpit and wounded people needlessly. One time I had witnessed to a cousin of mine and then uh, encouraged my cousin to listen to a radio broadcast. And she called me after the broadcast and she said, who who, <laughs> who are you? Are you the guy that was witnessing to me yesterday or are you that mean guy that was on the radio today and i i that really took me aback and then she said i, I in this particular sermon i was coming down hard on some bad doctrine uh in in another religion and she said look if you need to come down on them talk to the people who are preaching that doctrine not to those of us who are trying to learn the right doctrine you know, that really helped me. I realized I was puffed up. 
I knew some things that other people didn't know, and I wanted them to know that I knew them. That doesn't help them. Charity helps them. Charity, the Bible says, edifieth. And so we have to have charity. There are people who don't know what we know as Bible believers, but we can't be puffed up about that. With charity, we can instruct them. You know, you've heard the saying, and it bears repeating, they'll never care what you know until they know that you care. There is truth in that. So what's the conclusion of, the, of this message today, these pitfalls as Bible believers that we need to avoid? Listen, when God has given you the truth about his words, we believe the King James Bible is the word of God. You can't compromise on that. You, you cannot go against what you now know to be the truth. However, neither should we condemn others who are still ignorant of what we know. We need to have grace, and we need to have charity with them. We, we can't allow ourselves to get so puffed up in our knowledge. And, and when you see a preacher or you see a church, and they're doing something that you wouldn't do, uh, I'm, we're talking about convictions and methods, not doctrinal error here. Don't be too quick to condemn them. And there are a lot of, you know, churches that are live streaming now. You may look in there and say, man, I, I would never have our choir do that. Or if we did a youth program, but we'd never do that. All right, well, don't be too quick to condemn them. W what should you do? You and I just need to make sure that we're doing what the Lord wants us to do. And that's all we need to be concerned about. Uh, preachers and churches are often very proud of their convictions very proud of their methods of ministering. And they can easily think, hey, we're better than others because of what we believe and what we do. That's the ditch into which the Pharisees fell. Watch out. Don't go there. It's very important to find out what the Lord wants you to do in your life and in your area and stick to that without judging others because they're not doing what you're doing or they're doing things differently than you would do them. We have different gifts and different callings. Have some grace with those who aren't quite like you are. Amen. You have been listening to The Unknown Bible, the radio ministry of Bible Believers Baptist Church in Corpus Christi, Texas. For information about our church, go to our church website at www.my3bc.com. That's my, the number three, bc.com. If you would like to contact us by telephone, our number is 361-241-6100. Bible Believers Baptist Church is a Bible-believing church located at 1701 Rand Morgan Road. If you are not currently a member of a Bible-believing church and you are looking for a church with an uncompromising stand on the words of God, come visit with us this Sunday or Wednesday. We would love to see you. Hallelujah.